Halo Infinite's combat philosophy was revealed in the recent Inside Infinite development update. In this video, we take an in-depth look at 343 Industries' combat doctrine and its emphasis on Bungie's Golden Triangle combat. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. As many of you know who are subscribed to the channel, I've been releasing in-depth dives in the recent development update that we had back in January. This is blog update was so large that I had to skim over for the initial video to kind of give you guys the highlights of everything, but there were so many juicy details involved with this. I wanted to kind of release different videos for each section that they had in there. We already did it for the vehicles and the weapons, and now we're doing the combat for Halo Infinite. And reading through this just makes me feel like they're really putting a big emphasis on the classic Halo feel and going back to more of its roots of what makes Halo so great and unique compared to these other shooters that are out there. So in this video, we're going to go into deep dive into their combat doctrine that they have written up. It's a five pillar document kind of going into exactly what makes Halo, well, Halo. Now you may be asking yourself, what is this combat doctrine that you speak of? Well, the quote, the sandbox lead Quinn Del Hoyo, he said this saying, the Halo combat doctrine is a document that establishes core Halo gameplay philosophy. It outlines our principles of what must be true when playing in Halo sandbox and specifically the moment to moment combat. So essentially it's an overarching document that they kind of go back to refer to going, does this fit Halo? Does this fit our combat doctrine? The five pillars of this doctrine being the dance, tools of engagement, lone wolf, connected actions, and survivability. So let's jump into what the the dance is. The dance is kind of a reference to the flow of gameplay that Halo has that's so unique to Halo. You know, getting like that right time to kill, the movement of the game, the diverse sandbox, uh, energy shields and health models, etc. Just kind of this whole entire package of what makes Halo gameplay so great. That's like kind of like the way the guns kill, uh, the way the player moves throughout the map. You know, obviously we kind of do like these strafing maneuvers, which are kind of like a dance kind of between each other to kind of outplay one another. And this all kind of feeds back into what's referred to as the golden triangle. If you guys all know what the golden triangle is, it's basically the three ways players can deal out damage within the game. That's guns, grenades, and melee. I have a clip from a Vi doc from Bungie that really kind of summarizes the whole thing very quick and easy. How bad how best do I use my melee attack or how best do I use my grenades in order to tip that fight a little bit over in my favor? The assault rifle works really well with the golden three things of Halo, which are weapons, grenades, and melee. The different kind of weapons that you get to use now, the way that they're balanced against each other, the way the weapons are placed on a map, but it brings a certain something to the map that just makes it play right. So this simplicity of damage dealing makes it so that Halo's gameplay can be rather simple and easy to pick up, but complex enough to where it can definitely be more dynamic. Also labeling it as the Golden Triangle kind of implies that it's a core mechanic that what makes Halo such a unique shooter. Though these three points of the triangle definitely have their different weights given the situation. Say if you pick up a power weapon, well definitely the weapon is a much higher weight. If you're in a close range with a fully auto weapon, probably melee may be better. Are you able to predict spawns and kind of get yourself prepared for a gunfight? Maybe throw a grenade. Now you may think that equipment that we saw in Halo 3, which is making a return in Halo Infinite, may add to that triangle, but it really doesn't. The reason why it doesn't mess with the golden triangle is that all the equipment in Halo 3 is non-lethal. The purpose of equipment is to alter the gameplay within a situation to tilt it into one player's favor or another. It's still requiring the player to utilize either your guns, grenades, or melees to actually execute the kill. A little bit of a rant on Halo 5 here, but this is kind of really ties into why that golden triangle is coming back in Halo Infinite. With Halo 5, they tried adding elements to that triangle, being ground pound and spartan charge, creating more of a golden pentagon, removing some of the need that that golden triangle and rely on some of these instant kill abilities. This causes an issue as it greatly affects game sense and the ability for a player to counter whatever maneuver was brought to them. Barn charge reduces the dance for close range encounters to just a charge, resetting the encounter, 
halting the flow and tilting the gunfight far too much into the aggressor's favor, while rewarding players for reckless play and lack of game sense really, while ground pound here causes an issue with an instant kill ability on many of objectives. For example, strongholds on Empire where you're trying to capture that center hill point. It could be almost impossible to capture that point with a team that's somewhat coordinated and knows how to utilize ground pound. With ground pounds, reach, speed, blast radius, and instant kill potential, it makes it incredibly difficult for the player on the hill to counter while trying to play for the team and capture the objective. Adding too many elements for a player to take into consideration, so having two or three players down doesn't provide that much of an advantage as one player can just instantly stop the progress on the capturing an objective. That's why Halo Fit's looking to return to that golden triangle. The second pillar here, we have tools of engagement. These are the different items you get to utilize in there, but they do specifically mention how when you're using different weapons and pieces of equipment, that they want you to feel powerful. They don't want you to feel like a regular soldier. They recognize that you're a super soldier. You're a freaking Spartan. You're a badass. And they want you to feel like that with these weapons and different items within the sandbox. They also state how they want to put a big emphasis on creating unique aspects for each item within the sandbox, being equipment, having it play out differently between other pieces of equipment, weapons, having their own unique roles within Halo's sandbox while reducing some of the redundancy that we've had previously, especially with Halo 5 and Halo 4. Like for example, the DMR, which was originally in Halo Reach, then they brought a light rifle into Halo 4, which kind of just worked like a battle rifle and a DMR at the same time. And then in Halo 5, the light rifle was essentially just like a hard light DMR. That was really much the difference. A little bit different amount of shots needed for the kill, but essentially the same exact gameplay. So that's why they're looking to kind of reset and kind of reduce the redundancy create more unique weapons and aspects of the sandbox to kind of play off of that. Like for the classic example when it comes to weapons, we all know that plasma weapons do really great against shields, take those off really quickly, but not so great against health, while more kinetic weapons like from the USC do great against health, but not so great against shields. So it's really important to utilize the tools that you have available and depending on what you have at that time, will alter the style of your gameplay and engagement, keeping the game fresh and fun. Third pillar being the lone wolf ability. Now, when I first read this, I kind of get concerns of say like Call of Duty, because Call of Duty puts such an emphasis on the individual when it comes to the gameplay that it kind of ruined it when they tried doing that with Halo 4, by reducing that a little bit with Halo 5. But it sounds like with Halo Infinite, they're really bringing it back to the ability of kind of playing with the team. Before 3 also wants you to feel like your actions matter and what you do in the game can alter the, alter the outcomes of a game. They also do mention specifically in here that they want to make it feel like this plays into your loadout as well for the lone wolf aspect so where if you just spawn into the game you feel like you have a fighting chance within any kind of situation at some point or another obviously if you play against someone with a power weapon that might cause some issues but they said that they want to reduce the time people have to look around for a good weapon in the game Halo 5 certainly reduced this problem. Halo 3 didn't really have this issue as you started out with a battle rifle, which is a pretty solid choice right there. Uh, Halo 2, starting with a battle rifle, is definitely having that feeling. But they also don't want to have the feeling of Halo CE's Magnum, where that was so overpowered that it made every other weapon in the game kind of redundant and useless. So reading this makes me feel like we're going to have a really good starting weapon. Probably the battle rifle would be my guess for multiplayer as we don't have like that classic Magnum coming back in Halo Infinite, at least now at the moment. And we definitely know that the battle rifle has been proven that to be a great middle ground alt utility kind of weapon. And I would be very surprised if we don't start out with a battle rifle as your starting weapon in Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Fourth pillar here being connected actions. This is the feel of the game, right? The way your player moves interacting with the user interface of your choice, be it keyboard, mouse, or controller. Halo has always had a very specific feel when playing on a controller that doesn't really come across any other game. The motions have weight and it's kind of floaty, but yet very responsive at the same time. It's hard to really pinpoint it, you just kind of have to play it for yourself. I mean, I've played very many other shooters on console and Halo is one of the best, if not maybe the best game I've ever played on a console. And they stay here specifically saying they want the controls to feel frictionless, natural, and responsive to a point on the controller or keyboard or mouse as well. So that players don't have to fight against the controls to make the game play well or do what you want to do in game. And you may have heard this news already. I did mention it in a previous video, but since we're talking about strictly about the combat in Halo Infinite, they do mention you'll be able to completely rebind your buttons 
on controller. I'm sure they'll still have the same loadouts or layouts as like Bumper Jumper, Recon, Green Thumb and stuff like that, but if you wanted to switch it up to maybe have the B button be your shoot button for whatever reason, you could probably do that in Halo Infinite. And the last pillar here is survivability. What 343 says they want to do is give a clear understanding of players' vulnerability and threat indications while playing Halo. The first thing here they mention is that they want to make sure that players are able to recognize and have the ability to assess the situation and make proper moves based on their health states and make the correct combat decisions based off of that. From what we've seen in Halo Infinite, they have the standard health bar at the top of the screen, kind of top center like we've had traditionally. It seems to be falling in line more with the way like Halo 3's user interface and health system is where you have shields and then your health kind of gets chopped down after that. Halo 5 did this actually really well because it had the shield bar on top of that and they had a nice little thin line for your actual health as well. And also we saw in Halo Infinite those crazy large hexagons that showed up on your screen when your shields recharged and make it very obvious that yes, you're charged up now, you're ready to get back in the battle. Personally, I would don't mind the hexagons too much. I would just really like to see those toned down or at least push to the sides a little bit more, or at least lose the opacity a bit because they seemed rather blocky and kind of in the way and really got in the way of having better visual ability to see what's going on in the game. And for the UI, we did see in the gameplay demo that you just see like the blue health bar at the top, but actually when you take some damage, then you see your health bar actually kind of fade in to the shot as well to kind of give you a clear understanding that's your health, those are your shields. And then once your shields are fully recharged, that health bar kind of fades away to kind of minimize the clutter that's on your screen. Very well done UI, I would say on that. The second part they talk about is how your shields actually work within Halo Infinite. Uh, now, these have worked definitely differently between each Halo game. Uh, we all recognize that Halo 2, like on Legendary for the campaign, you have like no health. Like you get taken out super quick and easy. Like we all know about those Jackal snipers and like get melted in that game absolutely or like say like in halo ce it's probably a little bit more balanced gives player a little bit more, more better notification as well as same thing with halo 3 as well so they mentioned here specifically saying that they want to make sure that they tune the max shield value the shield stun time the shield recharge time and more around the proper gameplay for halo infinite it's a very tough balance to make because you definitely want to feel like you're a super soldier so you can probably take a few shots but you don't want to feel like an invincible monster who can just walk through everything and not have any kind of challenge. It's a very fine line that makes 343 definitely needs to try to ride on to make sure to get the best kind of gameplay possible. And from what we saw from the gameplay reveal, which I believe was played on Heroic if I remember correctly, or maybe Normal, uh, it does seem like that the damage that was dealt to the player was probably about accurate as where it should be. So you can see with these five pillars, in addition, along with the philosophy of the Golden Triangle, that we will have very similar gameplay that we've probably recognized quite a bit within Halo's history. I have a feeling it's going to be a very strong Halo 3 influence when it comes to its gameplay loop, but also having some new abilities like Clamber and Slide that we had in Halo 5, which I think the majority of the community liked for the most part. And if you design maps and engagements around these abilities properly, then you can make a pretty sweet looking Halo game. If you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Check out the videos on the screen over here if you missed anything from recently. Keep yourself into the loop and of everything that's going on with Halo. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.